A lot of the time I look back to the messages back and forth I had with places such as the Dallas World Aquarium and the Toledo Zoo. As well as my own video I took when I went to the California Academy of Sciences in their walk-in flashlight fish display. Or even with my still ongoing conversation with Jay Hemdahl. And I think to myself, wow, I can't believe this is actually going to happen. Well today, that journey starts now. Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel if you are a returning subscriber or if you're just someone who just saw the video and decided to check it out for yourself. But either way, welcome! And today after one and a half years in the planning uh, of research and talking to experts and other hobbyists and browsing different forms and stuff like that, the flashlight fish display which I'm going to call lights in the night is finally happening. So before I get into like all the details and stuff that I have for this build, I just want to give a quick shout out to some of the people and places like the Dallas World Aquarium, the Toledo Zoo, and the man Jay Hemdahl for helping me along with this build uh, since it's been in the making for the past one and a half years. Jay Hemdahl especially because he's helped with answering a bunch of my questions, different equipment things, nutritional stuff, and just everything like that to make sure that I have good success with flashlight fish and can provide them the best care possible. So as of right now, this is going to be part one of this series since this is going to be a multi-part series. We'll go into things like a uh, filtration and heating and tank placement and nutrition and other stuff like that since the whole reason that I am going to document this build is because I really want to show people how to properly take care of flashlight fish because I think a lot of people assume uh, from where they come from because they come from reefs in the Philippines that they are just another uh, typical reef fish that you can just throw into a reef tank or a tropical fowler tank, which is not the case at all. Flash eye fish are special fish, both in their care and their looks, but they're not a fish that you can just, you know, throw into a reef tank like I just gave an example earlier. You really want to have them in a tank that is dedicated to just themselves as they do need cooler temperatures that go down into the low 70s depending on the species. They need almost pitch black. Uh, you can have red and some blue lighting if you want to since I believe fish can't detect red lighting and blue lighting is not stressful to them because I believe to them it acts kind of like moonlight because they are nocturnal fish so having some low blue lights do not uh, stress them out. But things like reef lights and stuff, you know, uh, they really stress flashlight fish out. And even if you have uh, caves uh, in your rock work that the flashlight fish can retreat to during the day, uh, the temperature doesn't mix well with them for being, you know, in that like 78 to 80 range. And also they're not a fan of high flow, which depending on what kind of coral tank you have, or I'm sorry, depending on kind of what reef tank you have or what kind of like corals you have mixed into it, they probably aren't going to be a fan of the flow either. So there's just a ton of factors that unfortunately prevent them from mixing uh, with corals and having them in a reef tank in general as well as a lot of other fish and invertebrates as well. So I'll go more into the whole setup of the tank once I get into the actual spot that I'm going to have it in because that area needs to be cleaned up right now. But what I have going right now is a 125 gallon tank, the 125 stand and then as well as the lids. So I got this all used from Seatown Reef on Instagram. So Go check him out. He's doing some really awesome stuff. And his new macroalgae tank he just set up recently as well is really awesome. But he offered me a deal for the whole set uh, after he saw like on my Instagram I posted like uh, this is kind of like uh, what I was going to do or what my goal is for the end of the year. And yeah, the offer was just too good to pass up. Uh, if you're wondering the details, it's about a little less than half the cost of what a brand new set is. So while the tank and the stand do need some cleaning up, to do uh, like on the tank there's a little bit of algae which is not a big deal and there's also some uh, salt creep on the tank and a little bit on the stand and then the sand I mean the stand might need a little bit of repainting it's honestly fine with me he already told me uh, all this earlier and I just I'm fine with because I have enough experience cleaning out algae from uh, old tanks and stuff like that so if I can get a deal that good for just a little bit of cleaning I'll, I'll swipe it up ex extremely fast so I went with the standard 125 because I think that it is an affordable option uh, as well as being 
a sensible one that you can have in like your house or your garage or a basement and stuff like that and it also gives the fish a ton of swimming room as well since you know it's about six feet uh, across and then i think a foot tall I, I i forgot the other dimensions but with it being about six feet across that gives me plenty of space to work with as well as plenty of swimming room for the fish which flash dry fish are also uh, some pretty active swimmers surprisingly so give them as much space as you can and the reason i say this is affordable is because my original idea was to go with a innovative marine uh, 100 int which is a reef ready uh, system with an overflow in the back but no offense to innovative marine i have some of their products and i really like what they're doing for the hobby but the tank itself was fourteen hundred dollars so i think this was last year when i was saving up and i got around to the 400 mark after like three months i kind of got discouraged like looking back like do i really want to wait this long so i ended up using that on other stuff that was more beneficial but after thinking about it again i think this was the right option to do since this whole setup uh maybe including the fish but i don't i think that would be going over but for the price i got the tank and the stand and the lids at and probably if you got a brand new one as well for like standard retail price as well and then you have filtration into it and the rock work and like the cardboard and velcro which we'll talk about in a bit that whole thing might be equal to or just a tiny bit over of how much the tank itself would have just costed so i think i'm really glad i went this way and i think i'll talk about uh what i'm going to use to block out all the light during the daytime so this tank is actually going into my garage uh at first i think i explained this in one of my videos earlier in the year when i said that this was probably my main goal for this year was that this tank's original plan was to to go upstairs but that's why i ended up not working because the weight with how much the tank and the stand just weigh by themselves plus if you add water and rock into the equation it's just too much weight for the second floor which is actually how i this plan might have not happened because there was virtually no other spot to put it uh and at that time it just didn't work out well uh but since everything is getting rearranged in the garage uh my parents uh specifically my dad he brought up the idea of putting it somewhere uh in here which is, that spot is still be uh is still be uh still to be determined i don't know why i can't speak today but this tank will have a guaranteed spot here and then my mom uh, also agreed to the idea so i have both my mom and dad's permission which is awesome so the way i'm gonna do this because actually this spot in the garage is way better because if it was upstairs uh i basically i would only see the fish at night because there's light coming in from basically everywhere upstairs uh but in the garage uh if there's no one in here i can just take off the cover and just look at it uh whenever i want to with the lights off but there's still gonna be lights and uh light in here uh, like with people coming in and out and as well as you know the garage door opening of course uh, also there's going to be less foot traffic in here as compared to upstairs which uh, i guess is better for the fish so they won't be as stressed out from like hearing people walk around and stuff like that but the way i'm gonna try and build a so-called barrier to block out all the light uh is with black cardboard and velcro so my original idea was to do with a uh, black cardboard and tape or glue so i can just make a big kind of case that you can just slip onto the tank and take off in one piece but as I thought about, as I thought more about it, I realized that there would be some kind of struggles uh, that I would most likely encounter with that version. So what I came up with is I can just glue pieces of Velcro onto each sides of the cardboard so that I can just un-Velcro a section of the tank I want to and then just Velcro it back on when I'm done, which I think in my head sounds a lot better. Uh, we'll have to see with execution and I'll still make a video on how to do that if you do want to follow along with this build and then probably in that same video i'll see if it works out or not so yeah that's really all i have for this first uh kind of video in this series so actually i'm going to talk about about which species of flashlight fish i'm thinking about having in here because if you have seen some of my past videos talking about the tank you do know i was originally going to go with the one fin flashlight fish which is floatable pharaon palpabratus but after discussing it a bit with jay hemdahl i'm kind of in the fence now between the one fins which are the rare uh flashlight fish but they are more a uh, bit more hardy and their light which is the photo for is on more often compared to the split fin flashlight fish which is most likely the fish you'll see in the uh, hobby 
uh, as well as at public aquariums but those are the most delicate he's found as well as the photo four is off more often uh so like if you're at a public aquarium you see the lights blinking like almost all the time that's most likely a split fin because they basically blink every time they move or turn uh directions or i'm sorry change directions which albeit is really awesome but the most delicate uh part got to, uh got me so i was leaning towards more the one fins but as i uh, mentioned earlier the reason i'm kind of in the middle now is because one fin flashlight fish uh, are kind of a mix in how they do with each other uh, some groups do good with each other uh, but others can actually fight in the groups so it's kind of like the same thing with like the most delicate uh, part about the split fins is that you don't want to go through all this time searching for them uh, because they are the rare of the two in the hobby uh, as well as putting a lot of money to them because I, they can go for about 70 to 110 dollars depending on size and source uh, just to have them kind of kill each other off, which would be unfortunate. So right now I'm leaning a bit more towards split fins, which might actually help this a lot because them being the most um, common of all the flashlight fish uh, species in the hobby and at aquariums, I think that would help uh, with like the education part of this build uh, with kind of educating people about like, hey, this is how you actually take care of them properly instead of just not throwing them into a reef tank and expecting them to live for like 10 years. So when the time comes i will reveal which uh species i did settle i, I do sell for uh so that'll be a fun thing that we can see but yeah basically besides that this is the first introduction to the lights in the night build uh aka the flashlight fish build and yeah i'm just super excited this is coming together uh without different things happening uh like sea town reef again shout out to him on instagram uh just giving me this amazing deal as well as meeting jay hemdall on reef to reef which if this build does go out i mean uh, does work really well and if there's ever a chance i can go to uh, the toledo zoo maybe we can do like a meet and greet or something like that uh with him which would be really awesome so with that being it if you do like the uh sound of this build uh and just all the content on my channel please consider liking subscribing and sharing this video around and with that being it, my name is Northwest Fishkeeping, signing out.